how to make this Dylan Lex inspired neck piece and the real ones are about $900 and they're amazing but you probably wouldn't want to spend that much on jewellery especially if you're like me and you ruin everything or lose everything so my version only cost uh, I want to say under $50 I would love to show, show you the pieces separately, but I filmed the tutorial before I filmed my introduction video, so I can't. But at the start of my tutorial, you'll see them separately. I'll just explain what they are though, because I didn't do that in my video, because you know, I'm smart like that. So I've got this bottom piece, which was um, that, the coin piece, which is from Sports Girl, and I, it's like $30, and I got it on sale for about $13. So, um, so yeah, none of the pieces I'm using today you'll be able to find outside probably because they'll be sold out because I bought everything on sale. But that's kind of the key of keeping the cost of this necklace cheap. Either find old pieces or find pieces that are on sale. And then, so my second piece is from Diva. It's this big chain thing. I'm sure it's really easy to find. And that was like $5.00 not exaggerating, it was on sale like once again, I think it was $15 to start off with or something like that. And then my base necklace, which is the most expensive, which is Jolly and Dean, and it was $50, however I have a staff discount, so it was a lot cheaper than, um, than that for me, but basically you need just any kind of strong, sturdy base piece so it will hold your whole necklace together. And so yeah. As you can see, all the pieces were really cheap and you just kind of have to source everything and it takes time, but after you put it all together, it's worth it. So yeah, um, I'll get on to the tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to start off by detaching this um, base piece from the chain. So with my two pliers, I'm just going to get this jump ring and push it, not out, but back and forth, like, oh, if I can do it. Um, like so, probably doesn't help that I don't have the right pliers, but oh well, and just get it off and we'll save my job ring for later, and then I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so. so this necklace here is going to be the base of my, um, of the neck piece, and I'm attaching this chain bit to it. It's got a really tacky dive onto it, so I'm just going to put that out the back and just curve it along to the base of the necklace like so. So now that I've got it even, I'm just going to get the clasp of this by using the same technique with the jump rings. So pushing one back and the other forward, like so, taking that off, saving the jump ring because you probably need it for later. Um, this has an extra jump ring, so I'm just going to do the same thing. Take that off and do it on the same other side. I've just cut a bit of my beading wire and I'm going to use this to attach the two um, necklaces together. So as you can see on this necklace it has kind of a loop hole there. So I'm going to loop that in there and then loop it into this necklace like so. Get it kind of to the middle and just twist it a few times round. Okay, so now that I've got both of them, I'm going to continue just threading um, into the first base necklace and then into the loop of the second necklace. Just, and then pulling tight. I'm just gonna do that until I feel like they're both secured safely in. So I've looped that around, I want to say six or seven times, and to finish it off, I'm just going to wrap it around the base of the second necklace. Like, 
just the second necklace, not going in, just around. And then just into the hole of the second necklace. And by now, it'll be hard to thread stuff because the wire's taking up a lot of the hole. And just in, yeah, just Around, just thread it in and out of the base, like left to right. All right, I'll just twist those ends together and hope for dear life that that disappears. And I'm just gonna leave it like long just until I attach all the other parts. So now I'm gonna do my second one about a quarter way down. And so put it into a loop like so. Then put it into a small loop, like so. Make sure it's even. Good enough. And then twist it together. I'm going to even out the two lengths now. I'm not excited, but should I be? Okay, so I've just finished looping that, and I've only done about three or four, I think, because the bottom, the middle ones don't need to be as secure as the um, ones on the top. And to finish that off, again, I'm just going to twist it, the two together. So like in a windmill motion, and then and then I'll leave that long as well. So I've just finished the other three, and for those ones, you know, remember how I said pull really tightly? Don't, because then your chains won't sit close together. As you see, that one I've kind of it's still it's quite far away from each other and I've just worked it heaps so it stays together and so I've done the same with that. Okay so for the last bit I'm going to add this little neck piece on. So again I'm just going to use my beading wire and I'm going to use the same technique as I used before which was doubling it just so it's stronger and so I'm just going to measure out about the middle of it. Because I was so good at measuring the middle last time, but okay, that's about the middle. And what I want to do, again, thread through the small bit, then the chain. Oh, going through. Beating thread is quite different to normal thread, as you can tell. Um, so I've threaded those two. I'm just going to go ahead and thread my other side on as well, because I want it to be even, and I don't want to, to have thread it round, round it round too tight. So again, I'm going to get pull, thread that through, and then measure it that's about the chain it needs to go to. There. Okay. Um, now, oh, apologies, maybe there's too much wire going on. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Okay, so that's that wire. I'll just it straight, even it up, again, twist it round, like the wires around each other, and now, even it out again, I'm just going to loop it at the end together so I thread it a bit easier as well, and I'm going to go, does that throw again? 
And these kind of just need to be a bit neater just because it's kind of the focus of the necklace. Is this the fate that I for the world plan for me? I know I love you and you love to see. But what all the water contains is it drop, it drop to me. Okay, so I've heard that through about four or five times. I couldn't do as many times because the hole in the base necklace is a lot smaller. And now I'm just going to cross loop around that so like right to left and just kind of just wrapping around the wire I already wrapped just like I did the other time so kind of if you think about it it's like a cross symbol yeah and I'm just gonna leave that there and go on to my second one And there you go. Let's just see. Like so. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and I've kind of neatened up my end pieces. So maybe I'll just wrap it around just so so short it disappears. And so yeah, and if you still get excess, what I'll do is just Get your pie, your, your pies, your cutters, and just trim that off like so, so it's nice and neat. And do this on the other side as well, of course. So at this point, I've picked it up and tried it on, and it's actually holding together quite well. However, as you can see, there is a big gap there, so I'm just going to get another wire and attach it there just to be sure. I've got heaps of excess, so I'm just going to use a short one because it's not that important. If I'm born again, I know that the world will disagree. One little grace, but who's going to say? So there we go, and there's also a bit of a gap right there, so I'm just going to add, oh, sorry, I'm just going to add the base piece and just say in there. But should I be? Is this the fate that I for the world's plan for me? Okay, so that's all done. Um, all up, I think I've got okay, I've got one joint, two joints at the base, I've got one, two, three, four, round the middle for the base and middle necklace, and then on the middle necklace and like finishing off bit. I've got one, two, and then two in the middle as well. So yeah, it really depends how many um, kind of loops, like wire bits you want to put on it. The more you put, obviously the more secure it's going to be, but if you put too many, then um, it's going to be too tight around areas, like for example, like this at the moment, or like that. So. I can get away with making those two tight because that's all loose. So yeah, you really kind of just need to try your necklace as you're going along and see what bits need to be done. Yeah. So that was it. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos. We'll have a few London ones as we're going travelling. But yeah, um, like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And yeah, I'll see you next time.